The last year of 3D platformers has been truly incredible. Since 2023, we've gotten Cavern of Dreams, Koa and the Five Pirates of Mara, Jusant, Pseudo Regalia, Bomb Rush Cyberfunk, and Body. And this year, we've already had Penny's Big Breakaway and a huge update to Super Kiwi 64. But it does not end there. We have a ton of promising 3D platformers coming this year and next, so much so that I had a hard time deciding what to put in this year's upcoming 3D platformer video. That's why there are seven games this year, and some honorable mentions, more than the last two years. I also reached out to multiple developers this year to get more details, and even got to play some of these games myself. If you're a fan of 3D platformers, you're gonna want to stick around for this video. Billy Bust Up. We start with a first for the series, a game I have already featured before. Billy Bust Up appeared in the first upcoming 3D platformer video in 2019 as little more than a prototype and a dream. Fast forward six years and just like Pinocchio, it's a real boy now! <laughs> It's being developed by Katie Nelson and James Thomas, who at the time were called Blueprint Games, but now go by Giddy Goat. They had a successful Kickstarter campaign in November 2020, meeting their goal in less than 24 hours, on their way to raising over 146,000 pounds, or about 185,000 US dollars. They are joined by Gooseworks, who you may know as the animator of The Amazing Digital Circus and composer on Has Been Hotel and Hell of a Boss. The composer is even more important for Billy Busta, because not long after my video, they reveal that the game will be a musical, not dissimilar to the recently released Hi-Fi Rush. Inspired by Disney musicals, the Kickstarter reads, with memorable, unique villains and singing bosses, we've entwined the gameplay into the music. Combat is based around rhythm, and enemy attacks follow the beat of the song. Bosses will sing in fights, and their lyrics will give you a hint as to their next attack. We can see that in a demo provided during the Kickstarter campaign against Fantasio. Fan... Fantokio. Fantokio? It's gotta be Fantokio, right? Fantosio? Fan... Fantosio? A puppet who's been trapped in a theater for 15 years. I was getting big A Hat in Time Mafia boss fight vibes from this section. The music will also adapt to how you play, and Every song mixes things up with new and different gameplay experiences, according to the Steam page. They didn't really say how that works, but I'm guessing the music will slow down if you're struggling, or speed up if you're doing well, something like that probably. If you're not a fan of musicals, then it seems like the core platforming will be separate from the music-based combat. They don't really mention how the music affects platforming, just fighting enemies and bosses. You will have a plethora of moves, however, from gliding, an umbrella shield, invisibility. You can dig holes, rewind time, and even open the umbrella to make it rain. That last one will let you put out fires and make grass grow, though I'm not sure to what end. But what is this game about? Well, you play as Billy, joined by her fox companion Oscar. Billy lives in a village and feels held back by its strict rules. One day she's approached by a man named Aristotle, offering to teach her magic in exchange for the small favor of saving the world. The one puppet guy, Dutch the wolf, Elaine the cat pirate queen, and Barnaby the ghost owl are all up to no good. Giddy Goat does say this will be a character and story driven game with a surprisingly dark story. Not many details have been shared about the world itself, either. The hub world will be Billy's house, a giant treehouse, where you can see the rest of the world and hang out in between levels. The first level, controlled by the pirate Elaine, is a massive pirate city with lots of hidden areas. Billy gets captured at the start and must break out of a prison in stealth sections. Billy Bust Up certainly looks and sounds unique. I appreciate the blend of rhythm and music-based combat with more traditional platforming gameplay that also offers some unique ideas of its own. The game continues to charm the pants off me, and with big names attached like Gooseworks and voice actors Amber May and Edward Bosco, I think the music side of things will be really good. There's no release date for the game yet, though it has picked up a publisher in Humble Games. Beware, beware, cousins would be scary, the Pirate Queen's game. When you find it, don't be rushing in. This fortune doesn't favor the bold. All right. Gear Grit. The game I am most excited for on this list is Gear Grit, heavily inspired by Jack and Daxter, especially Jack 2. Jack and Daxter was my first 3D platformer, and Jack 2 remains one of my favorites to this day. When I saw Project Praxis, as it was called back then, while browsing Twitter late one night, I knew I immediately had to play it. 
So I reached out to its developer, Weston Mitchell, and he agreed to share with me the Patreon backer demo, which is updated multiple times a week, and chat with me about the game. I should also say that I did a sort of playtest, giving feedback and general notes to what I played. Mitchell worked as a technical artist at Blind Squirrel Games, though he now works at Obsidian in the same role. He's developing Gear Grit in his personal time, as he did with his previous game, Fade Out Underground, in 2022. Mitchell tells me that he is a big fan of the Jack and Daxter games, especially the plot of 3. I really liked the Rebel arc in Jack 3, he said, where you have Jack taking back the city, so it's a bit inspired by that and the general vibes of Jack 2. He shared with me a detailed story and character outline, but for now he's keeping the plot tightly under wraps. What I can say is that you play as Tansy Geargrit, who at the start of the game is in jail for an unspecified crime, when she overhears a plan that could destroy everyone's way of life. She busts out of prison and plans to overthrow the corrupt Ankh's directorate and save the city and its citizens. I was impressed by how much Geargrit's demo felt like Jack 2, while also offering enough unique ideas and mechanics to still feel modern and different. But keep in mind that this is early development footage you're seeing. The final game will be a lot more polished than this. There are still a lot of art assets, animations, and mechanics that have yet to be implemented. The brief campaign demo starts you in a town with the objective of climbing a roof to get the lay of the land and then gain access to a weapons facility. Both areas show off the game's core mechanics of platforming and combat very well and already the platforming is solid, it feels great to control. There are also two races in town, one on hoverbike and one on foot over rooftops. From the moment the demo starts, it screams Jack 2. The art, the music, the way the city is laid out and going into sub-zones through these big breach doors, the walls around the city, the big tower visible in the background, and the hover cars, the guns, it's, it's like a trip down memory lane. That's not to say this is a one-for-one -one copy of Naughty Dog's homework, though. What sets this apart from Jack and Daxter is its emphasis on combat, particularly melee combat. Enemies take more than one or two punches to go down, and Tansy has an array of combos at her disposal such as an uppercut, leg cut, slide kick, and more. She has guns, but they're more of a secondary attack. Think along the lines of Dante's guns in Devil May Cry or Bayonetta in, well, Bayonetta. The main hub world will also be a little more lively than Jack 2's. The city will be a hub world, but also a fun time to hang out in, littered with optional challenges, hidden collectibles, etc. Jack 2 does this a little bit, but not to the extent I play on doing it in Gear Grit. Here's a fun bit of behind the scenes design talk. I was talking to the developer about the lack of a ledge grab like there is in Jack. At first I didn't like it because it just makes sense for somebody to grab a ledge if you miss a jump and you're falling. But then I actually thought about it. When Jack grabs a ledge, it makes platforming much easier because you know you have that safety net. Mitchell tells me that he took that feature out precisely for that reason, instead opting for a ninja kickflip that you can do against a wall which will propel you up. So you still have the ability to save yourself if you missed a jump, but there's still a level of skill needed to use the ninja kick at the right time. Plus you still have to be at least somewhat accurate with your jumps because this isn't some miracle that'll just save you. It just kind of goes to show how much thought has to go into every every little detail about a game. Gear Grit is still relatively early in development, like I said, so don't expect to play this one anytime soon. Though, that being said, Mitchell is planning on releasing a public, more polished demo later this year. I fully intend to keep an eye on this one, however long it takes. Any fans of Jack 2 and 3, or 3D platformer fans in general, should definitely keep an eye on this one. <laughs> Paper Clay Paper Clay is being made by Y Kev, aka Kevin Anderson. He's worked on a bunch of games in the past and regularly posts devlogs on YouTube. These videos are a wealth of information for budding game designers, and I highly recommend checking these videos out if you're interested in game development yourself. Anyway, in Paper Clay, you play as Chick, joined by Nugget. And that's about all the information the developer has shared about these characters in the world, plot-wise. Well, that and the Steam page says, Meet and befriend a charming cast of craftspeople, from the cardboard scarecrows of Foldy Woods to the great Pinecone King, spiky monarch of Pinecone Village. The whole world is made of arts and crafts material, not unlike Tearaway Unfolded or Sackboy Big Adventure. You'll be able to interact with the world in unique ways based off of this, such as rotating and folding the environment, using zippers to open new areas, or twisting and turning wheels to watch new features grow before you. There's a demo on Steam, and I had a lot of fun with it. It was short, but that fits with the theme of the game itself, as the website describes this as a short and sweet 3D platformer. 
The game feel is pretty good, though I thought the jump was a little on the floaty side. It wasn't too bad, though it did take a little getting used to. You have a good array of moves from a double jump, a lunge jump, as well as a glider, which I always love in platformers. There are a lot of hidden areas too, which is always appreciated. There's this one that I didn't notice until I played through the demo a second time. I found it really well hidden behind this set of jumps behind a high wall at the end of the level, and you have to go through all these twisting and turning jumps to get up there. It was a lot of fun. Paper Clay certainly looks great. Wykev is getting the most visually out of this paper craft aesthetic. Though I do hope the game does a little more with the arts and craft aesthetic gameplay wise. It was a mostly style thing in the demo, not really used in gameplay like Tearway or Yoshi's Crafted World. It kind of resembles more like Sackboy Big Adventure than anything else in that it has the style and does a few things with that arts and craft motif, but it mostly kind of plays things straight. That's what I'd like to see most of in the final game, for it to do a little more with the whole arts and crafts angle. Otherwise, the demo was a lot of fun, and this is shaping up to be an excellent 3D platformer. The game has also been in development for two years now, and Wykev revealed in a recent YouTube video that it even caught the eye of some publisher, but he decided to self-publish it, which really has my respect. Self-publishing an indie game is always hard, but especially these days with the game industry in such a poor state. So for someone to have the guts to do this by themselves, to me that's just really admirable. There's no release date for the game yet, but I suspect it isn't far off. Paper Clay looks to be the perfect game for anyone looking for a chill, laid-back, and short adventure in beautifully crafted environments. Sunhara, Akorpi Islands Developed by Twin Brothers working under the name Clover Atelia, Sunhara at Corpy Islands is their first game. Inspired by Super Mario Sunshine and Here Comes Nico, Sunhara is a bright and colorful 3D platformer that sees you ridding a beautiful tropical island of dark matter that's corrupting the land. I wasn't able to find much information about it other than some screenshots and a placeholder page for an upcoming Kickstarter campaign. So I emailed the developer and they were kind enough to answer my dozens of annoying questions. Though they warned me that French is their primary language and they weren't very good with English. The answers they provided me were translated through DeepL and I cleaned them up a little bit, so keep that in mind. Emil tells me that they didn't go to school to learn game developments. They learn through simply downloading Unity and watching and reading tutorials online. Emil is in charge of game and level design and modeling the characters and environments, while his brother does the programming. They've also brought on Don Deemers to write music, which he's already written two songs for and will do more if and when the Kickstarter is successful. Emil gave me an early plot summary of the game, though he did note that this could change and evolve in the future. While lounging around one day, Clara discovers that she's won an all-inclusive trip for two to Akorpi Island, the country of the leaf-headed people, the Akorpis. Accompanied by her aunts, they set sail for the island, but upon arrival, learn that the island is in a state of panic. The Great Butterfly Jewel, which gave life and abundance to the island, suddenly exploded and several corrupt masses were scattered over the island. Clara does what any lazy vacationer would do and ignores this, except she stumbles upon long lost ruins where she finds a sword, which instead grants her a magical hammer named Olala, who explains to Clara that it's her job to purify the land of corruption. Thus, it's up to Clara to use the hammer to rid the world of dark matter and find a way to restore the crystal. While the game does take some inspiration from Super Mario Sunshine in terms of visuals and story beats, the scope and scale of the game is much smaller. While the game does take some inspiration from Super Mario Sunshine in terms of visuals and story beats, the scope and scale of the game is much smaller. Emil stressed to me that Sunhara is not intended as a spiritual successor, but is instead a more light-hearted, smaller scale game about exploration that simply takes some cues from the Mario Vacation Simulator. Here, levels are one shot. You'll arrive in a world, clean it up and gather collectibles, and then move on to the next one, rather than returning to a location multiple times with it constantly changing. As for your moveset, there's a double jump, a spin and side somersault, a wall jump, and a ground pound. The hammer, Olala, also has several different abilities. You can use it to perform a hover jump, a ground pound, you can throw it like Kratos' axe in God of War to hit buttons or activate switches, or use it to glide up walls, stuff like that. Emil was pretty open and honest about some of the difficulties they were having in learning how to use Unity and generally how to make a video game. They've had a lot of hardships they've had to overcome, and there's still a lot of work they have to do. But from talking to him, I could tell that he really enjoyed making Sunhara and talking about it. The man rained an ungodly amount of exclamation marks upon me, and I salute him for that. You don't do that if you don't have passion.
As for the Kickstarter, they are currently deciding on when exactly to launch it, though it will happen sometime this year. Like Paper Clay, Sunhara looks to be a short but sweet 3D platformer for anyone looking for a laid-back experience in beautiful environments. If you liked A Hat in Time or Here Comes Nico, I think this game is going to be right up your alley. Project Teamy, Sasha's Curse. Developed by Ephemeral Cube, a team of four founded in 2019, Project Teamy is another unique rhythm-based platformer that, to me, looks like it's taking cues from Captain Toad and Lumo, with its diorama levels and overhead camera. There's also a dash of Psychonauts here, with a story involving delving into people's minds and exploring their dreams and nightmares. As Teamy, your job is to travel into people's nightmares and learn what's causing them, sorting out the problem, usually a boss character you have to defeat, and returning good dreams to their slumbers. There's been an increase in nightmares, however, and Teamy quickly learns that it's the work of the evil Sasha, a mischievous cat who is apparently making a profit off of these nightmares. There's a demo on Steam, and I'm glad I played it, because before I did, I thought this was going to be fairly similar to Captain Toad. But while the resemblance is there, it does quite a lot differently. Platforming is similar to Nintendo's Adventuring Fungus in that the levels are small but dense dioramas with a lot of collectibles hidden away in nooks and crannies that you have to figure out how to get to. Unlike that game though, there is combat, which plays similarly to, and this is gonna sound ridiculous, the PS1 game Intelligent Cube. You enter a grid, the enemies approach you on that grid, and you have to lay a trap down in front of them on a specific square and wait for them to cross that point and activate the trap to defeat them. Except here, it's all rhythm-based, time to the beat of the music, and enemies can move in four cardinal directions, not just straight ahead. There's a boss fight at the end of the demo that really shows the potential of this combat system. I liked it a lot, a lot more than I thought I would, and I think it's really going to make the game stand out. The game might still be a ways off, though. It was announced during 2022's Wholesome Direct, and there's been a coming soon placeholder on Kickstarter for just as long. Regardless, Project Teamy Sasha's Curse is a promising and unique platformer with an interesting mix of puzzles and rhythm-based combat. I love the art style and dialogue, and I'm telling you, this combat system makes the game really special. Yeah. The Gecko Gods. The Gecko Gods is a puzzle platformer by Louis Wallachek, aka In Resin, and published by Super Rare Games. The Gecko Gods kinda reminds me of Snake Pass in that the game isn't a traditional 3D platformer in the sense that you're jumping around. Rather, you play as an actual gecko and crawl along floors, walls, and ceilings. You can jump, and I'm sure there'll be moments where you need to, but really this is more about exploring and solving puzzles than it is platforming challenge. You can also control a sailboat, which geckos are of course known for. Hopefully we'll get to sell insurance at some point too. You'll travel through an ancient deserted island full of ancient temples and long abandoned settlements. You'll also be able to explore and find secrets in just about every nook and cranny and piece together what happened to the people that used to live there. All the while, you're on a journey to find your missing best friend. I found a post on PlayStation Blog going a little deeper into the gameplay. The Gecko Gods seamlessly blends open-world exploration and elements across a sprawling archipelago with the intricate challenges presented in forgotten ancient tombs. These tombs house head-scratching puzzles that will put your problem-solving skills to the test. For the completionists at heart, there are collectibles to uncover in the form of bugs, which our charming gecko protagonist eagerly devours. The game looks gorgeous, and I'm really looking forward to exploring its world. I like the different approach it's taking to the genre, going away from traditional jump-based action platforming and the overly cartoony look for something that's a little bit more grounded and revolving around puzzle solving as much as platforming. Big Hops Big Hops is a frog-themed 3D platformer created by Chris Wade. He's got a pretty impressive resume, having previously worked at Alchemy Labs on Vacation Simulator. He also worked on Battleship Brigade, Manifold Garden, and Mortal Kombat X, and solo developed Sausage Sports Club. He started work on Big Hops five years ago, occasionally posting small updates to Twitter. Big Hops is not a solo project, however. Dialogue is written by Liz Looney, a cartoonist who also worked on Ollie Ollie World, while Tom Duncan is doing the music. He also worked on Battleship Brigade. You play as a frog named Hop who's been frognapped by somebody or something and must make his way home. So not much has been shown of the game publicly so far, which is why you're seeing my stupid face rather than gameplay, but the Steam page makes some pretty big claims I want to draw attention to. 
With big hops, we want to take a big step forward for 3D platformers and not spend much time retreading existing ground. This game is our answer to the question, what could 3D platformers be with deeper, freer movements and open-ended systemic item interaction? Over on Twitter, Wade expanded on that a little. Expect a structured adventure where freedom and expressiveness permeate everything you do rather than a sandboxy playground. Similar to deep puzzle games, the most interesting ideas aren't something you can throw at players right away. You need to introduce and develop a vocabulary over time before players can engage with higher levels of complexity. So certainly some high level stuff going on there. We can't really see much of that in what we've seen so far, but that's just because we haven't seen much so far. Based on videos and GIFs, we can see Hop has quite the moveset. He can use his tongue as a grapple, he can do dive jumps, run up walls, walk on walls, rail grind, and roll. You can also swim, of course, though it's hard to get an idea of how inventive the game will really be right now since we've seen so little. What we do know is that Big Hops takes place across eight levels. The Steam page says these are sandbox levels. There's no release date yet. In fact, Wade said as recently as January 30th this year that Big Hops still has time in the oven. I'm interested to see what kind of inventive ideas the game has up its sleeve. Wade seems very set on implementing new ideas and ways of playing with Big Hops, structuring those ideas in a more traditional package. I'm not sure how that's going to work out exactly, but I look forward to seeing if they can pull it off. I'm going to close this video out with some honorable mentions. Tori Saturn is the third Tori game, this time featuring a visual aesthetic more in line with the Sega Saturn than the PS1. Developed by Siakro, this will be another bite-sized platformer emphasizing speed and quick reflexes. It expands on Tori's moveset by offering two new moves, a ground dash and a homing attack. The game releases sometime in 2024. Electrokinetic, developed by Ritzler, is a roguelike 3D platformer where you can customize your own moveset and upgrade it as you progress. Like any good roguelike, when you die you start all over again, but you keep the moves that you've unlocked, hopefully allowing you to progress further than your previous run. Levels will get harder the further you progress and will be randomly generated. It also releases sometime in 2024. Slime 64 is a retro-inspired collectathon where you play as a ball of slime specifically four different ones created out of air, fire, water, and earth. It's your job to save the world from the evil Whirlston by collecting golden keys to unlock new areas where the four protagonists will eventually meet to come together and combine their powers. Full disclosure, this is another game that I've played an early build of and provided feedback for, and the developer has supported me on Ko-Fi, which is where I've learned of it to begin with. There really is something here for everyone. There are fast-paced, speedrunny type games, slower exploration games, games that lean in nostalgia, and those that experiment and push the boundaries of what 3D platformers can be. Bright and colorful, cozy type games, and dark, gritty, more difficult games. That's what's so exciting about the future of the genre. There's not only a lot of games, but a lot of diversity, too. The future of 3D platformer genre really is looking great, and don't forget all the games from my past videos that are still right around the corner. Not to mention Playtonic and Gears for Breakfast are surely working on sequels to Ukulele and Hat in Time. And all the non-indie 3D platformers coming up too. With Nintendo's next console coming... eventually, you can bet we're gonna get a new 3D Mario soon, and there have been fresh rumors about a brand new Banjo-Kazooie game in development. I'm really excited for Epic Mickey Rebrushed later this year, and Sonic X Shadow Generations is coming soon too. Uh, actually, I just saw rumors this morning about a new Sonic Heroes remake, so there's that as well. This truly is a great time to be a fan of 3D platformers, and I hope this video kind of shared some new ones with you, or maybe even made you a fan of the genre. In any case, I thank you for watching this video, and I hope you stick around for more videos about them in the future. Thanks for watching.